So can you hear me? Okay, I think it's, it's fine. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to the session Next Generation of Battery Packs for Battery Electric Vehicles and Plug-in <coughs> hybrid, hybrid Electric Vehicles. Uh, my name is uh, Martha Yalabuki, and I'm project advisor in uh, CINEA, <laughs> uh, the European Climate Infrastructure and Environmental Executive Agency, and I'm here with my co-moderator, Denise Tapler from ABL, uh, who will moderate the Q&A session at the end. Uh, so I think, uh, yeah, people are still coming, but uh, we have to start, <laughs> not be late. Uh, so, at, as it is well known, the European Environmental Policy for Climate Neutrality by 2050 is pushing towards rapid implementation of transport electrification. Uh, so, in order to accelerate the market take-up of electric vehicles, it will be necessary to increase the density of battery packs in terms of weight and pack at space in order to improve driving uh, range. Moreover, shorter charging times for uh, battery electric vehicles through high power charging will enable traveling longer distances. However, this imposes further challenges on cooling needs. And to add one more point here, uh, the higher performance of battery packs raises safety issues which require more robust and flexible advanced battery management systems. So the projects of the session today are improving the performance of the electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids. Their work uh, includes, among else, design of advanced battery packs and systems, advanced battery management systems, and the development of solutions and processes for sustainable dismantling and recycling of battery packs and their materials. We have with us four innovation actions projects, Liberty, Marble, Albatros, and Helios. All of these projects were started two years ago at the beginning of 2021, uh, and they will complete their activities in about one and a half to two years. So today's presentations will highlight mid-term results. Before presenting the first speaker, I have to mention that these four projects have also created the Colabat cluster, which is very active and works in the area of sustainability, BMS, test methods and, st and standards, as well as modeling. So um, I will not take more uh, from your time, and I think it's time to welcome the first speaker, Eduardo Miguel, who will present the Liberty project. Uh, Eduardo is working at Ikerland as a researcher in the energy storage and management line. Eduardo, please, the floor is yours. Okay, so, okay, so thanks a lot, Martha, for your kind introduction. So, uh, as Martha said, my name is Eduardo Miguel, and I will present you today the Liberty Project. So for that, I will go through a brief introduction, uh, showing you the goals that the project has, some facts and figures, the structure we follow, and some perspective through the European Commission, and uh, following some of our key innovations, and I will also talk a little bit about the Colabat cluster. Right? So Liberty stands for Liquid Battery Systems for Extended Range at Improved Safety. So we are in the context of uh, electric vehicle battery packs, and uh, I will talk to you about uh, that a little bit later on, but we have a benchmark vehicle, which could be the EQC uh, from Mercedes-Benz, and that's also going to be the vehicle in which we are going to validate our results and, and integrate our battery. So um, we have five different objectives uh, in order to uh, improve the battery system that that vehicle has. Uh, the first one would be to achieve a range of 500 kilometers, which means uh, more than 20% of improvement. Uh, a short charging time, which is going to be uh, under 20 minutes, something like that, which is uh, more than half uh, of, of the time. Um, also, we want to achieve a safe battery. Uh, no numbers in there, but we will get into details a bit later. Uh, 
The fourth objective would be to achieve a uh, long battery lifetime. We are targeting uh, 300,000 kilometers, uh, which is an 80% of improvement. And finally, we want to uh, build a sustainable battery pack, right? So those are our, oh, sorry, our objectives. Um, for that, uh, we have a pretty nice consortium uh, with 16 partners from several countries. You can see them in the picture. Uh, Ikerlan is the coordinator, and the project started in January 2021, as Martha just uh, mentioned, with a duration of 42 months, so we are more or less in the middle of the project. And for this pro specific project, we have a budget of uh, more or less 10 million uh, euros, mm -hmm. right? So uh, that being said, I want to show you a little bit our work package structure. Uh, which is strongly linked with the fee safe methodology. So those work packages are going to be um, targeting that methodology. Uh, first of all, we have a first work package, uh, which is going to be dealing with the requirements of the vehicle to follow with a battery pack design, and uh, which is going to be work package two, and work package three and four, which are going to be the development of the battery system components, hardware components, and also uh, the fourth one with the BMS and the state estimation algorithms. And that would be the whole way down the fee shape. And to go up, we have two different work packages, uh, a transversal one, which is going to be work package five, in which we are uh, designing the testing uh, procedures and methodologies, and work package number six, which is going to be the, the specific work package in which we are testing uh, those procedures. Um, finally, we have a work package seven, which is uh, going to deal with the sustainability of that battery uh, to assure that it's going to be present in all the design phases, also as in testing phases. So now that we know our objectives, uh, I just wanted to gather your attention regarding the framework of this, of this project. Uh, the framework could, with, will be the Horizon 2020, and more specifically the LC button uh, call. And here we can grasp uh, most of the technical advances that we are going to be facing in this project. Um, so we are going to be talking about advanced battery pack, especially taking attention to lightweight in the battery, crashworthiness. Uh, we are going to be talking about sustainable dismantling of the battery pack at the end of the life, um, flexible battery management systems in order to be adapted to different use cases remote maintenance and, tra and travel suiting, which is strongly linked with the digitalization that uh, we are facing last year in Europe. Um, we are being going to be talking about high voltage systems compatible with fast charging. Um, also, we are going to be facing novel procedures for testing and uh, uh, qualification. And finally, we are going to integrate all these advances into a specific vehicle. Uh, so that leads us to our key innovations that, as I told you, are going to be integrated in the Mercedes EQC vehicle, picture there. And so just to gather a little bit, again, the objectives we have, since are going to be extremely linked, uh, linked with, sorry, with the um, specific uh, innovations we have, we want to achieve a 500 kilometer range, short charging time, safe battery pack, le long lifetime battery pack and the sustainable battery pack, right? So to start with, um, our battery pack is going to be a cell to pack approach in which we are not going to have battery modules, right? And that's going to um, contribute a lot to the range and uh, objective since we are going to get a more energy dense battery pack. And together with that cell to pack approach, we have a, a immersion cooling based thermal management system in which we have a monophasic fluid uh, in which the cells are partially immersed. And after that, uh, you will see that here, um, from the bottom of the battery pack, that the electric fluid is reflowed to some nozzles on top of the cells that are going to spray that the electric fluid, increasing the specific surface area and um, improving the way we cool those cells. Um, finally, that cooling is going to uh, to make it uh, possible to fast charge our battery pack, as well as mitigating to some extent the, um, the thermal runaway situations. So we are going also to contribute to the safety of the battery pack. 
since contributing would be not enough, we also have an active safety system in which we are going to be using that system to encapsulate a group of cells to prevent the thermal runaway propagation from that confinement of, right? And uh, this active safety system that you can see in here uh, in a bit more in detail is uh, composed of a two-phase fluid that is going to boil up in case of a thermal runaway, extracting that energy from the cells. Um, and also we have a fire retardant material in between the two rows of cells that we have in, in, in that confined group of cells that is shown in the top left of the, of the slide. And that is going to be uh, making it happen uh, later in time so that use of the active safety system is going to be less intensive so we can size it a little bit or smaller than it would be with a normal propagation. So after that, uh, the battery management system, we were facing flexible battery, man battery management systems, and that's why we used the Fox BMS platform, which is an open source platform that's going to be allowing the use of this BMS in different case uses and different uh, vehicles or uh, applications. And we redesigned the slave board of the BMS with uh, an integrated boost bar system um, that is going to be compatible with uh, the electric fluid we have in the battery, and that will also allow to maximize the energy density in the battery pack in our specific case. Um, following with the state of uh, X estimation algorithms, we have two main requirements in here. First one would be that we want to achieve a quick model development phase and also reduce the experimental burden. So for that, we are using uh, neural network-based network uh, models uh, or algorithms that brings us to the benefits of incre increasing the accuracy and the reliability as new data from operation is added to those uh, algorithms. We also can improve the performance under unobserved conditions because of the same reason, because we have data from the field coming to the algorithms. And uh, with the use of that data, we can also um, reduce the experimental burden that is needed at the production phase of that vehicle. So we can add later on uh, more data to those algorithms. <coughs> so finally, with our uh, innovations, we have the battery passport concept. So with this concept, we are able to um, <coughs> process and store real-time data fro from the battery into the cloud. And that will allow also us to um, provide advanced services, as well as enabling the transition to a second life application, which could be stationary or whichever the case it is. Uh, and finally, just a few words about the Colabat cluster. So this is a cluster composed of the four projects uh, granted in the ELC button call uh, that are here today. Um, as Marat has said, we have divided the cluster into four subclusters, which are going to be sustainability testing, BMS, and modeling. So still stay tuned uh, if, you, if you want to, and be ready for some events, workshops, and white papers. And that could be all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Eduardo, for this very interesting presentation. And you, you were very well uh, in the time. <laughs> Uh, just a reminder for the audience, please keep your questions for uh, the dedicated Q&A session. Uh, so we'll uh, go uh, straight uh, to the second pro project, which is Marble, and it will be presented by its coordinator, Eduard piqueras Hover. Eduard is a Research and Innovation Program Manager at Eurocat Technology Center. Please, Eduard. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for uh, Marta for, for this session and, and CINEA and European Commission. And, and also thank you to you all for being here to listen our what we have to tell you about our innovations in, in battery pack level. Okay, I will present the project Marvel. Uh, as, uh, okay, this is going.
Ah, all right, sorry. No, it's okay. I didn't attend that. Okay, that is concerns the, the uh, design, manufacturing, assembly of a modular reusable electric vehicle battery, okay, for lightweight mobility is the title we put it. Uh, well, you will see more or less the same contents about the, the expected. I, I, we want to, to emphasize on the, exp on the expected results we are, we, are, we are having in these projects. Uh, Project Marvel is from the same call as the other ones uh, for the next generation of, of battery packs, improving the performance of the battery pack uh, without uh, touching or, or, or going on innovation on the cell itself or the chemistry, but on all the rest of the battery system. Uh, the project is three years and a half, as Marta mentioned, we are on, on the second year. Uh, and this project is coordinated by Eureka, the research center in the area of Barcelona. But together with us, we have several other research centers specialized in different fields on, on the battery system. Uh, also, uh, different tier ones from material development for structural parts, uh, aluminum, for instance, for NASA's, also for bus bar connections, uh, junction box, electrical systems, etc. And automotive engineering, uh, the other was presenting a nice project on, on simulation this morning. Uh, battery recycler and also other uh, SMEs, I will explain the innovations they, they improve. And our OEM or the uh, manufacturer, car manufacturer guides our, our innovations in this is uh, Group Stellantis, the research center in, in Torino Fia, uh, from Fiat. Okay, uh, the main objectives of Marvel. Marvel is, is centered in, in, in the innovation in Marvel is focused on the four steps of the life cycle of a battery. Okay, not only in one of them. So from the production uh, to the, the assembly, manufacturing, the use, okay, and, and, then, and also what, what happens by the end of life of, of this battery, and also not only in terms of second life purpose, but also in maintenance and enlarging the, the life of these batteries, okay? Mm, on, this, on the side of designing and uh, conceptualizing the, the, the battery, uh, we are working on design for circularity. We're working on a modular and lightweight battery uh, using recycled alloys. Uh, we are working with wellless modules, okay, easy um, to get easy for assembly to assembly to save uh, weight, to save cost, uh, by, uh, by working with uh, smart cell managers, communicating with the, the models with the, with the uh, BMS, so wireless communications. With these improvements, uh, we uh, target a 20% weight reduction of all this part of the battery that exclude the cell, okay, excluding the cell, uh, but also an improvement of 40% of the life cycle uh, of, the, of, the, of the battery in the design, but also in the other parts of the cycle, of the life cycle, okay, also in the use. Regarding the use, no, and the performance of the battery, this is some of the points that uh, the attention to the end user of these uh, electric vehicles cars, no? The, the reduction of the charging time and the extension of the useful battery life up uh, will facilitate the mass, mm, mass acceptance, mass production and, and, uh, and use of these kind of vehicles. Uh, but at the same time, if we gain uh, a useful battery life, life uh, we extend the life of the battery, we reduce also their impact, okay? So it's important also in, the, in this sense. In this part of the performance, we work with thermal management, uh, improvement of thermal management, ultra fast charging strategies and advanced BMS. Well, I will go on details later on. And then one final part regarding testing, validation and dismantling. Okay, let's, let's move forward. You will see more details. What's the situation now? We have working these last two years on on uh, setting up requirements, uh, working on the development of methodologies for this eco-design uh, approach, uh, building all to, uh, will, uh, working all together all the stakeholders from the battery system, from the electrical system, structural parts, thermal management, BMS, all together to, to design this battery in, with this, with this uh, focus and vision, okay? Uh, we designed the different systems and now we find in the, in the, in the moment of of getting things into, into real physics uh, models, uh, prototypes, battery packs, to validate at the end of the project, okay, in, in, a, in the proper TRL, okay. Regarding more details on the design for circularity, what we made regarding the, the uh, structure, uh, structure of the housing, we worked with recycled aluminum alloys, we optimized it with uh, topology optimization, the, the pro these profiles, 
and the welding solutions because the design of this of this um, housing is uh, as is the, the whole battery is modular so in terms that you can uh, use this for different applications needing more bigger or smaller batteries okay this is the the, the, the vision and the, the, the way we, we designed this uh, then from another another side of the whole battery is thought in this direction of being modular with this also including this thing of the of the welders connections uh, to for an easy um, disassem for this assembly purposes but also for for facilitating uh, second life applications with an easy dismantling an easy uh, substitution of modules for instance um, then this again what i mentioned the welders boost bar and the cell to cell connection this uh, this flexible welders boost bar facilitates this this dismantling okay uh, apart from the, mo the modular uh, design <coughs> finally uh, what i was mentioning previously in the first part of the project we define we um, designed a methodology for eco design okay that that we are applying in uh, for for this particular uh, purpose of the battery okay where we focus on the hotspots involved and, and what i think it's more important we involve it, uh, all the stakeholders from the all cycle stages design manufacturing use and life and i think this makes Mm, the more powerful this method uh, than others that maybe are based more on bibliography, etc. Okay, and, and with them we define it specific actions to for for the for the housing, for the the connections, for the thermal management system, etc. Regarding the performance, as I said, one of the expected results is to to decrease the charging time with uh, ultra fast charging strategies and here today there is a colleague of the project carlos abomelic from ficosa a company uh, supplier of, of automotive that if you have more specific questions you have the occasion today to to ask him uh, the charging station junction box battery switching 400 800 volts this is a product designed by ficosa so um, and then the enhanced thermal management okay that that were uh, have been working with a with a team from from ABL, uh, with a high well and combined it with other research centers, combining efficient cooling panels, functional aluminium profiles, that works on a mechanical, uh, also and as as a, as a mechanical and thermal purposes, and also the introduction of al aluminium foam uh, patented technology from Fraunhofer to enhance this this. Um, this uh, thermal management, okay? Then finally, in the battery management system, what we made is a, is a flexible and modular BMS that is adaptable to second life applications, okay? So we, we make a BMS that is adaptable to a large variety of batteries and application, not only for a, for a specific car. We work it on these wireless connections with a smart cell manager, reducing wiring complexity and part of weight, not much, but the complexity of the, of, the, of the connections. And then also uh, including artificial intelligence based expert systems that provide predictive early failure detection. Okay, this helps on the maintenance, but also helps on identifying which second life applications we can get from a battery that arrived to an, an end of life for the purpose of an electric vehicle. But this gives information to you where, where, what are the second life applications. The data transmission to the cloud is another innovation we are working with, with the proper uh, security communication channels that permits the BMS make more complex calculations because it's uh, uh, in the cloud and via this communication. The, 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 the expected impact is re this reduction of charging time and extension of, of life. Okay, That's, as I mentioned, extension of life is very important for end user, but also for reducing environmental impact of the battery. So we need two batteries for doing the same kilometers, better having one. Uh, then regarding the testing, that is where we get, we are, we are in the Colabat subclusters, we are leading where our partner THI, uh, mm -hmm. our research center on automotive in Ingolstadt, is leading the subcluster on, on testing because we are willing to getting new standards on, on, on how we test batteries. We, one of the, I would like to highlight the innovations of our project is this battery pack test bench plan platform that we call it electric vehicle in the loop that will be built in IDEADA facilities, in AP plus IDEADA facilities that uh, aims to be a flexible and versatile test, test bench adaptable to different platforms, okay? This eliminates the necessity of, of, of constraints of, of testing in a, in, a, in a given vehicle, 
so you can test your battery. Uh, it's, it's versatile to different to different um, platforms. This reduces time consumption, cost for testing, uh, and increase also the overall system safety. We will demonstrate the complete battery pack, and also the, the way of this is designed. You can have also the battery and the powertrain systems in different places. You communicate, and well, something that will be very interesting when it's when it's achieved. Uh, but this will be at the end of the project, of course. Then, regarding procedures for characterization, our our partner THI is uh, working on optimizing this end of line test, simplifying regular inspection, working on applying of artificial intelligence and data processing to reduce the necessary tests, so anticipate <coughs> results uh, and, and reduce testing, testing time consuming uh, on these on this, on battery packs. And also mechanical test procedures, not in terms of, of timing, but on scale, like uh, being able to test in a smaller scale, but is in to extrapolate the results on a, on a large, on a, on a full scale, okay? Uh, and finally, the, the efficient process for dismantling. There is a partner specifically working on this that already uh, asked um, for a patent in this. Yes, well, it's TestRec from France. A safe, efficient, and innovative process for opening pack models and other, and other innovations that will come, will be worked on in the last part of the project. Mm -hmm. This methodology for a co-design was also record, digitally recorded by IORECAT because I think it's, we created a methodology involving the stakeholders. I think it's very productive for addressing all the hotspots in the, in the battery pack in, the, in all the life cycle, all the steps of the life cycle from production, life, end of life. And regarding the standards, I, as I mentioned, we are leading the subcluster in testing, standard cell testing, harmonized data for cells, for battery packs, uh, modeling, well, these are the different subclusters where we are trying to, to uh, get together, find common challenges, uh, work on, on common paths for standards, and this is the main purpose, apart from our joining efforts for disseminating the, the results of the, of the four projects. Well, what's the long-term impact or uh, impact <coughs> in terms of policies or, 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 or citizen, no? Let, let's say, uh, as European citizens, I think the, as I mentioned, it, charging time and life of the batteries, things that, that will help to, to foster the acceptance uh, of the electric vehicle. Uh, it it's, it's affords, well, it tackles the, the main critical points in consumer decision, uh, uh, um, limited vehicle autom autonomy and the charging time, okay. Then we, with, uh, we work, work with more sustainable and efficient electric vehicles, okay. Uh, it's, it's true that, well, all the um, business and, and economics and etc. it's very true, but we need to s think on, on future, know what happens when all these batteries finish and, and lives, and their, their lives, or also uh, what if we, w we want to have batteries that have, you have to change it every very few kilometers, and, and, and then you have to produce a lot, but where, you know, all these things that, that maybe is a, a more a long-term thinking, but I think it's, it's important that, that we take into account this when designing our, our future batteries. We, will, we aim to contribute in this new industrial strategy for Europe, uh, mainly uh, on the Circular Economy Action Plan regulatory framework for sustainable batteries. Uh, I think it's one of the key actions for European Green Deal, apart from many others, but as I mentioned, these, these are the ones that we are tackling in our project. A uh, Marvel project contributes to meet the Euro European Union emission reduction target by 40%, by 2030, by developing these more efficient batteries, electric vehicles, but at the same time, uh, design it in this uh, circular by design approach. Mm, that would be all from my side. I don't know if I was very quick, not I. You were exactly at the time. Okay, <laughs> you, you have like 22 seconds left. Okay, well, then I take advantage to thank you again because it's very good that, mm -hmm. that you, you can come here and, and, and we can share results and, and discuss with the, with, the, with the people, all the stakeholders in the sector like we do in our eco-design approach the, to do it here also. Thank you. Thank you very much. And th now that was the, the clock. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Edward. Uh, so uh, the next project is Alpadros, and uh, it will be presented by its coordinator, Irem Sapmaz. 
in Irem is working at Yesilova Group as an R&D project executive. Irem, the floor is yours. Many thanks. Many thanks for the informing me. And I just want to start with the words for the Turkey situation because we are here, we are representing our country. However, we are uh, physically okay, but not mentally, because uh, Turkey, Turkey and Syria were hit by the worst uh, earthquake in that region for over a. Uh, <laughs> it's it's really hard to be there because it's uh, over than forty thousand people were affected, and we are here, but at least we are. They are in our thoughts and. We are here for them. I just want to start with these words uh, because we are representing them here also. Many thanks for your understanding and many thanks for the support for the well, to more than 20 countries from the European region especially. Uh, now I would like to jump into the introduction part. Many thanks for your understanding again. <laughs> On behalf of Albatros Consortium, I would like to welcome you on our project presentation. Uh, on behalf of the consortium, today we are, I am going to uh, mention some uh, technical achievements for each work packages, as, especially for the battery tray developments, pack developments, and also SEA studies included. And at the beginning, I will give you a short introduction regarding the consortium overview and our overview uh, of the project uh, budget and the duration. Okay. In Albatros project, uh, the project has been already completed the first time, half of the year, and the uh, total uh, allocated budget is uh, 10 million euros respectively, and we are the project coordinator Yeshilo, as a Yeshilova group. I just want to give some words regarding the Yeshilova group. Uh, we are the SME company which uh, is located in Bursa, Turkey, and we are the tier one manufacturer for the, especially for the OEMs, uh, especially the structural parts, uh, crash management systems, or co cosmetic uh, parts for the, which are made from the aluminum extrusion and casting casting subcomponents as well. And we are 21 partners from 10 countries, such a huge <laughs> consortium, right? And the development is mainly focused on the battery module and packaging and the BMS, TMS development, and also not only for the uh, design development, but also material and process development uh, have been ongoing as well. And this, uh, I think one of the most crucial part for our project is dismantling second life uh, usage and the reuse and recycle part of the project. And at the same time, LCA, st LCA studies are, is still in our focus area. Okay, what we are going to do in the scope of the Albatros project. Uh, BMW i3, it's our demonstrator car and all the technical achievements will be illustrated in the BMW i3. What we are going to do, what are our objectives? Of course, 20% 20 <laughs> 20 weight reduction for the whole battery system and develop some solutions, processes for the suitable dismantling, recycling, and bat uh, included battery bag and the module level as well and flexible BMS <laughs> development studies, and of course, charging time reduction uh, approximately 20, 25%, and improvement for the life cycle er between the 15 and 20, and increase the range up to uh, 480, it's currently between the 285 and 310 kilometer and one of, I think one of the most important for this uh, objective is the very fast safety detection and presentation technology development and also uh, battery 
functionality performance tested on the chassis dynamaton. To sum up, <laughs> at the end, we are going to test our Albatros system on vehicle on the road test on the BMW i3. At the beginning of the work package one, uh, we have performed some uh, road tests to understand the baseline functions for the BMW i3. And uh, we, according to the result, we have started to make some uh, integration studies to improve the values when we compare it to uh, baseline state. One of the most crucial points that should be highlighted from our side, because at the beginning the uh, main target is 20% 20, 20 weight reduction. Uh, well, yeah, what should we do? What should we do more? And then uh, University of London, we had some challenge, to be honest, we had some challenges to reach the related target because we have specific volume and we have some novel technologies that should be implemented on the system and it was a bit tricky. And University of Nottingham uh, made some researches regarding the uh, impact on the total mass on the range for the uh, current BMW i3, uh, the total mass around 280. And when we compare it to the total capacity increase, total capacity is 72, uh, 72 kilowatt hour. Even though the weight increase around 200, 200 kilogram, the rain, total range of the whole battery, whole vehicle is not uh, that remarkably affected due to the overall the range increases. The most important thing to increase the whole the capacity of the battery pack as well. That's why I would, we would like to mention this uh, result. It's, it's really crucial from our starting point. Now I would like to give you a brief information regarding to each work package's development. And the first one is the module development part. Uh, normally BMW i3 uh, is, uh, the cell selection is for the BMW i3, for the baseline vehicle, is power cell. And we are going to use cylindrical cells for the Albatross design approach. And according to what we have done until this time, uh, we uh, achieved higher uh, total system kilowatt hour uh, range, like it's around 31% increase rate. And the energy density is one of the most crucial points for the uh, achieve the total range uh, target. It's more than 200 uh, uh, watt hour per kilogram. The baseline is around 170 as well. And uh, one of the most crucial part for us is like uh, immersion cooling. The normally baseline car is just consists of the uh, cold plate, but we are going to implement partial immersion cooling system for the uh, cool as a cooling method. And the whole cell terminals and weldings and bus bars are cooled effectively. And let's continue with the module BMS developments. And from now on, we have completed the, uh, <laughs> the current status of the B battery management system is built up, built on the master slave approach, which, which gives us a effectively uh, and flexible approach for the further development as well. And also early warning systems are, can be implemented uh, for the current state and which are they are okay. Uh, the, how we can say, the result is not official, but uh, the current uh, analysis for the charging time reduction is uh, we are going to uh, reduce 20 minutes charging time according to the current development for the BMS architecture as well. And in immersion cooling is uh, implemented and connected to BMS effectively. 
um, because a design of the interface between the uh, modules and the immersion cooling uh, were improved to achieve the ultra fast charging approach target as well. According to the uh, trade design of the current system, uh, it's totally different from the uh, baseline, uh, baseline tray uh, design of the BMW i3. Uh, in this scope of the project, we are going to implement a uh, hybrid material usage in the battery tray. Top cover and side beam will be manufactured by uh, composite materials. Um, the top cover will be manufactured by the non-woven recycled carbon fiber polyamide mit mit matrix composite, composite. And the side beam also will be continuous carbon fiber composite as well. And we are going to uh, illustrate extrusions, profiles, and the casting nodes as well. Uh, the welding operation is tricky for the both uh, casting and extrusions. Therefore, there will be three different uh, welding uh, technique will be illustrated in the battery tray system. And the uh, castings will be welded by laser welding. Button plates will be to achieve the sealing properties. Uh, friction stir welding will be used. And the whole the aluminum interactions will be welded by CMT technique as well. Uh, not only for the BMW i3, but also uh, the whole the technic, uh, whole the design approach will be illustrated two different types of the application. One of them is light commercial vehicle. For Totosan is our partner, and they will be um, in, adapted to hold the battery system design into their vehicle. And also not only for for Totosan, but also uh, Daimler, Mercedes-Benz, Truck Turkey will be illustrate the modular concept design of the Albatros battery tray system in their vehicle as well. But their approaches will be totally different. Uh, Fort Autosan will uh, investigate the cooling system on their vehicles, and uh, Daimler will test the uh, whole the mechanical uh, shock test, road test will, as a virtually, and they will make some comparison studies. Is it feasible? to manufacture it in their facility in real life or not. And this is the dismantling part. And they have some advanced AI techniques that can uh, detect the screws on the battery pack dismantling. And uh, it, it works effectively. They, at the end of the project, the battery cell of the Albatros will be dismantled with the help of this approach as well. And also, uh, this is one of the most crucial uh, development from our side because uh, recycled anode and cathode material for the, uh, uh, as a black mass, uh, they, uh, NTNU performed some leaching operation with the sulfuric acid and they got uh, nickel, nickel, manganese and cobalt uh, from the mass as a precursor, and it's a really good point to get the, and the remained amount of the elements are quite applicable and okay. It's, it's a really good uh, progress for this part as well. And also we, are, uh, we have developed some algorithms to defect the state of health, state of functions of the battery systems. It's, it will be a synthetic test that can, be, that can uh, lead us to understand cells can be used for the second, secondary, li secondary life or not. And also uh, there, there are some cloud systems and uh, follow the algorithms that can, uh, it's a uh, agnostic cloud that provides you, you can put your or deploy or install your all the inputs to the system and you can understand that you can follow up wherever you are and it, it, the web server has been created <laughs> to track of the, the activities in the, on the web portal as well. And also uh, CA studies are uh, still ongoing for, for both the uh, technical part and the, also social impact part and, and the, they have created some portals that provide the input 
the temperature and uh, uh, analyze the battery cell characteristics and charging and discharging phases. And it, it will be a great opportunity to uh, create the battery cell design, battery pack specification and simulation uh, before the, uh, how can we say, physical demonstration as well. Okay, what's our mid to long term impact? Uh, okay, <laughs> just one. <more. laughs> I got it. Okay, uh, we are going to understand the Im immersion cooling is feasible or not, and we are going to illustrate the challenges as well. And also, we are going to validate the whole the developments on the road test. And also, we are going to understand and the reduction of the environmental impacts of the electronic waste. And also, we can understand and we can get a chance to a semi-automation process for the battery dismantling part, and also we can have a chance to monitor the battery packs and their performance as well at the same time. And BMS developments also, uh, call, how can we say, meets the cold challenges and the safety from the safety approach, um, flexibility and longer lo lose life as well. And the uh, algorithms are also <laughs> quite okay for the uh, detection of the operation during the uh, modules as well. Okay, I think <laughs> it's already <laughs> completed from my side. Please do not hesitate to contact me if you have further questions, especially for the technical part. I can raise them and I can give you a detailed information regarding what you need for the further development. Many thanks for your understanding. Thank you very much, Irem. Uh, and uh, we can proceed to the last but not least project uh, for this session. It's uh, Helios, and it will be presented by its coordinator, Cornelio Barbu, who is uh, an associated professor at Arus University in the Electrical okay, Computer Engineering Department. Okay, great. Thanks, Marta. <clears throat> uh, so just to follow up what uh, Iram said at the beginning, we have a few, uh, few of our colleagues are in Turkey, and that's a, that's a difficult time. Uh, luckily, none of our close colleagues have been impacted by the, by the earthquake, but we know that this is a tough uh, situation. <clears throat> We're going to have a few links on our uh, website and social media and things like that. Uh, to make donations to some of the Turkish organizations. Th those are directly managed by our Turkish colleagues. Uh, so, um, yeah, we work as a team, um, well, especially in hard times, right? All right, uh, so on Helios, uh, <clears throat> so this is our project. Um, uh, we started about two years ago. It's um, Innovation Action. Uh, Marta is our coordinator. Um, and. Um, yeah, I put this long number there just to show that accounting can be a real science. Um, so this is a description of the, of the project. Uh, basically, uh, we're looking into developing a smart modular scalable battery pack for a range of vehicles uh, with, uh, with improved performance and all that. So what does this actually mean? Um, <clears throat> basically, smart, we're looking at different uh, digitalization techniques, uh, building a digital twin to basically evaluate the performance of the battery pack uh, in use and be able to say a little bit more about their potential for second life. Um, on the modular side, um, we're, we're looking at modules not because we put the, uh, the, the, the cells in a module, but uh, the different modules are going to have different functionalities, and I'm going to talk a little, a little bit about this um, uh, as well. Uh, we're looking at a scalable uh, concept, so this is not for just one car, uh, it's uh, meant to be designed for a range of cars uh, of any size uh, and also for an uh, electric bus. <clears throat> so the way we look at the problem is basically on a bigger, on a bigger scale. Um, and used, of course, in urban uh, mobility, maybe some other, uh, some other uh, scenarios as well. Um, I have here a list of, uh, of objectives. So uh, basically, yeah, we look at a number of concepts regarding the circularity. Uh, we want to look at uh, <coughs> strengthening the Supply chain a little bit more. We're look, uh, working with uh, uh, car manufacturers. Uh, we're developing uh, sta standards for BMS uh, communication, among other things. 
um, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, generate IP and, uh, and those kind of things. Um, we uh, want to increase the energy density and the volumetric densi uh, power density of, uh, of the pack. Uh, basically, the key concept here is that we're looking at hybridizing uh, a, a battery pack. So um, as opposed to just using one type of cell for the whole pack, uh, we look at um, a dual chemistry, two different types of cells, one high power, one high, one high energy, and basically combine them uh, to achieve uh, some of these uh, objectives. Um, why, is this, uh, why is this interesting? Well, I mentioned the modularization before. Uh, potentially using two different types of cells, then maybe the pack can be customized or reconfigured to address different driving styles. So for example, if you have a more urban driving style, then maybe you want a little bit more on the high power end uh, and uh, maybe not interested that much on range. Uh, potentially, if you are more of a commuter style, then maybe you want a little bit more on high energy and, and less on, on high power. Uh, what do you do if you, if you change, if you live in the city and go on vacation? Well, potentially you can swap some of these high power modules with high energy modules. So there are some advantages to, uh, to this, um, mostly around the uh, uh, customization of the battery packs, depending on the driving style. Uh, some other technical issues as well, increasing life, um, charging time as well. Uh, so we're looking at uh, uh, 10C um, uh, cells even more than that, so potentially charging time could be in six, six minutes or less. Uh, yeah, and uh, looking at high power charges, of course, um, uh, increasing the number of uh, cycles, uh, those kind of things. Uh, and of course, the impacts afterwards are aligned, uh, are aligned to this, uh, basically improving the performance, improving the supply chain, of course, all EU-based, um, uh, those kind of things. Uh, we have a number of partners, so we have a, we are about 18 partners. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty big uh, project. Um, there are over 80 people contributing in one way or another to the project over 100 many years, so uh, <clears throat> quite, quite a bit of effort. Uh, we are coordinating from Arcus University, and we're also looking at some technical issues rela related to BMS, uh, modeling, uh, control of the thermal management system, uh, digital twin, those kind of things. Um, Kalsre is doing a lot of testing on the battery cells. Uh, Izmir is looking into the thermal management system. Alto has a pretty good team on LCA, LCC analysis. They're looking at evaluating uh, cells and some of the technologies as well. Uh, IREC has a pretty good contribution on L LCA analysis as well. RDUP is in charge mostly with the fleet management system. Uh, quite a bit of good work uh, done there. Uh, Envision is developing the IoT. Uh, Vestel is looking on uh, charging and second life uh, applications. Uh, Vitesco uh, has a very good platform or that we use for the BMS development and some other uh, new sensors that, uh, that they are looking into. Uh, Ineo is doing a lot of work on uh, FMEA analysis for the cells but also for the technologies that we are developing as well. Uh, Bozankaya is uh, an e-bus uh, uh, manufacturer, so they are going to look at uh, testing the battery pack in traffic, uh, hopefully towards the summer of uh, next year. Uh, UPC is developing the power electronics, uh, a lot of testing done for the battery cells again at uh, ZSW and DTI. Uh, University of Sofia is looking more into the uh, module and uh, pack design, the, the hardware part of it. Uh, Tupitak has done a very nice work on the cell selection and the architecture of the battery pack. Um, ECI is looking into uh, bus bar and uh, some, of this, uh, uh, some of these issues and then the dissemination done by, uh, by CNEO. Uh, this gives you an overview of some of the technologies. Um, as I was saying from the top, we're looking into some of these uh, digitalization techniques, uh, um, uh, digital twin uh, uh, models, uh, those kind of things. We have an IoT platform. Uh, yeah, the fleet management system, uh, BMS, with all the different uh, <coughs> models uh, that have to be developed there. You see on the left-hand side a little bit more on the battery testing and modeling done at uh, KAT, ZSW, and DTI. Um, LCA, LCC, those are uh, uh, very, very important things that uh, they were looking into. So <coughs> a number of uh, technologies I have here, and probably the slides are going to be distributed, uh, I have here a list of uh, technologies I think to keep in mind is that, you know, we started pretty low uh, TRL. We have to ramp it up uh, towards uh, TRL uh, 6, 7 uh, towards the end of, uh, end of next year. 
Uh, <clears throat> the way we looked at it was basically uh, going to the component development, um, uh, and this is what within the first two years. I'm going to have a little bit more on the, on the next slide, and then move towards uh, modular integration, pack integration, uh, testing, uh, and uh, those kind of things. Uh, so basically looking at this a little bit, uh, the schedule is that we're going to finish the cell testing pretty much uh, in the next uh, few months. Uh, component design uh, is going to be done in Q1, is going to finish in Q1, uh, Q1 this year. Uh, so basically in a couple of months, then we're going to do component testing and validation in Q2. Uh, component um, uh, manufacturing is going to be done in Q3 and the assemblies of the components in modules in Q4 uh, and testing the modules. Uh, we're going to assemble the modules in the pack beginning of next year and uh, pack uh, integration in the vehicles middle of next year. Um, <clears throat> so uh, maybe just to say a few more words about uh, some of the accomplishments, uh, you know, this is the uh, flowchart of the different uh, war packages, uh, probably not, uh, not too many surprises there. We spent uh, quite a bit of time in the first year to develop the requirements uh, for the cells, um, uh, power electronics, battery management system, the testing, the integration of the cells in the modules, module testing, pack testing. Uh, uh, we looked at the uh, standards and all that, so I think this was a pretty thorough analysis. Uh, and then uh, we, um, uh, we did quite a bit of work. You're going to see in the next few, si few slides in the work package two, three, four, five, and six. We haven't started seven yet. This is going to start probably towards um, uh, the middle of, uh, of this year and continue until the end of the project, end of next year. And work package eight, we just, we just started. <clears throat> uh, so we did uh, quite a bit of analysis on the LCA, LCC, mostly on the cells uh, so far. Uh, we have included uh, in terms of uh, material selection and things like that, LCC and L LCA analysis uh, for the technologies that we're developing, the thermal management system, uh, those kind of things. Uh, we spend actually quite a bit of time defining the, the hybrid architecture. Um, we evaluated, um, uh, well, first of all, for the cell selection, we discussed with some 30 plus sub cell suppliers uh, worldwide. I can tell you how exciting that discussion was. Uh, we've been able to select a few. Uh, we received the cells, those are in testing. Uh, in terms of the hybrid architecture, we actually did a pretty thorough analysis on what could be the KPIs to basically decide how we, um, how we select the cells and how do we assemble the cells in the modules. Uh, impact on the power, uh, power electronics and BMS and things like that. So basically, we came up with some 54 KPIs that we ranked. We looked at different concepts. Uh, uh, we, we used some uh, design for Six Sigma approach, so this was a pretty thorough analysis on what is uh, an optimal hybrid architecture for a range of cars to achieve the metrics that we, that we, set, uh, that we set ourselves to achieve. Um, the point of this is that you know, we selected some cells. If some other cells come on the market, then we can simply uh, repeat the process and, uh, and come up with an uh, optimal architecture. Uh, and then we started designing some of the some of the modules as well. Uh, we have a pretty solid work package on thermal management uh, system. So of course, because we have two different type of chemistries, there are some questions there as to what is the optimal architecture for it. Do we need to have two thermal management systems? Do we have to have one? Uh, we require a bit of modeling uh, on this. And now we're at the part where we uh, selected, um, uh, yeah, so again, we, we, we applied this uh, design for Six Sigma to select what is an optimal architecture for the thermal management system for, uh, for our hybrid pack. And now uh, we're in the middle of actually designing this, uh, this system, testing it, and uh, getting it ready to integrate in the, in the modules. Um, on the data uh, cell testing, uh, data collection, uh, this is a pretty thorough task uh, again. Uh, we are testing uh, the cells that we have received, the two different type of cells uh, in uh, three different locations, two in Germany, one in Denmark. Um, and then uh, we did quite a bit of work on uh, model development as well. Uh, so this is uh, supposed to end uh, uh, pretty much in a, in a few months and then use these models for uh, control, um, in, including them in the battery management system, digital twin, uh, those kind of things. Uh, we have another good segment on power electronics and BMS. Uh, essentially, the strategy here is to use the BMS that Vitesco has and uh, enhance its functionality for the hybrid uh, battery pack. Uh, we're looking at uh, wireless technologies as well. We're looking at a number of different sensors. Um, uh, 
uh, hydrogen, uh, CO2, humidity, temperature, uh, those kind of things. So we're, go we're going to have a multi-sensing unit uh, uh, associated with this, and of course, with all the changes required for the BMS to be able to communicate with this. Uh, so we're in the we're in the process of uh, uh, developing uh, the BMS for a hybrid uh, pack as well. Uh, we have, let's say, a digital uh, uh, package where we look at different. Uh, uh, IoT um, uh, issues, uh, digital twin, a fleet management system. Uh, so we have here, uh, you know, listed some of the results that we have already uh, achieved in the past two years. Uh, and uh, but of course we have a little bit more work to do uh, <clears throat> before we integrate everything in the in the modules. And I put here a picture of uh, our uh, happy general assembly in the summer uh, last year when we we're able to finally meet together. Uh, half in person in Barcelona at uh, Polytechnic University there and half of us uh, online, so about 50 people. That was, uh, that was pretty good. Uh, but uh, it does make a difference uh, meeting in person as well as opposed to just online. So that's what I had. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cornelium. So I have to say something here. So I know very well all these four projects. Uh, and uh, I have to say that these four projects are very hard working projects and people behind these projects. And having these projects um, working in batteries and electric vehicles, I think we still have hope for a greener planet and a better future. So thank you very much for all the hard work you have done during these first two years. So now shoot them with questions. <laughs> So I will pass now the floor to my co-moderator, Denise Tapler, uh, who will moderate the Q&A session. So. Thanks, Marta. I also want to thank the speakers again for giving us an overview how next generation of battery packs could look like. So I want to start now the question and answer part. And since this session is recorded for people online, and since this room is quite big, please use the microphone. Lucy is passing around. And I also want to kindly ask you that when you ask a question, please state your name and your affiliation and to which project the question is addressed to. So now the floor is open. I'm looking forward to your questions. Uh, hello, I'm Carlos Amailek from FICOSA. And now that you are here and you work in projects without uh, modifying the cell, uh, it would be good if maybe you comment the status of the cell industry that you may know because you had to purchase them. So who wants to start or should we go in the direction you presented or? I think all of us, since as mentioned, <coughs> we don't work on cells, but we need them as a basic element on our batteries. <clears throat> we, uh, on our, our exploration, we find ourselves very dependent from uh, foreign countries, uh, mainly <clears throat> China, and, and that supported some, 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 well, doesn't facilitate things if you have things more, more, more close, no? But yeah, that would be <coughs> my experience. Uh, I, f I found a, a big dependence on foreign countries, especially in China. Does somebody else want to? So, so probably depends what we mean by status, right? Um, mm -hmm. So in terms of technical performance, I mean, I think that's you know known. I mean, manufacturers are publishing uh, the data as much as you know. Um, we have had, you know, kind, kind of up, uphill battle to to get the cells right, and uh, you know, 90% of the of the companies that we talked to were in China, of course. Um, I think that's that's one of the things that um, uh, that uh, why we find Helios to be actually quite interesting because <clears throat> what we're trying to do is it's basically, you know, split split the chemistry and not necessarily wait until somebody has a holy grail uh, cell. So in other words, um, if we split the chemistry and, and look into high power, high energy separately, then we don't need to have a cell that magically hits two birds with one stone. 
uh, you know, both charging time and, uh, and the range. Right, and maybe, uh, maybe separate the problem and let's say uh, not rely that much on chemistry but rely on everything else except that. Uh, power electronics and digitalization and all these things, right? Uh, so maybe, you know, this could be a strategy to, you know, avoid trying to play catch up, uh, you know, and use chemistries that maybe are not that complex but increase the complexity. I mean, there's going to be an increase in complexity somewhere, right? But increase the complexity in, on, on the other side. Um, but yeah, that, that, has been, that has been difficult, and there were some other issues as well regarding the size of the project. I mean, you know. so I don't know if that answers anything. Yeah, actually, in the, in the line of uh, what you were commenting about, Cornelio, um, it's also true that working on the adaptability of our systems, um, it's, it's also a key point in being able to free a little bit from that dependency that we have, uh, which is cell supply. Uh, because we never know when it's going to be cut, uh, or if it is going to be cut. So having adaptable systems is also a good, well, good. <laughs> there's no good solution for that, but the best we can do. Maybe I can add some comments in this regard. Uh, during the cell selection term, it was much trickier than we thought because uh, it was really hard to manage the uh, objectives and the current status. And but supplying part was also uh, took longer than we expected. Two months delay. It's it can be <laughs> acceptable, but uh, we had to stop some technical progress because of the delay of the supplying the cells before the running the tests also, cell characterization tests. But the two months delay can be highlighted for this time. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? This one. Yeah, this is Anwar from uh, uh, Stray, Sweden. Uh, I have a follow-up question uh, about uh, cell selection and cell sourcing. I know it's difficult, but it will be nice if any of this co uh, project coordinator can give us some information where we can source the commercially available quality cells. I know that probably you uh, source it mostly from China, my understanding. Uh, all this new project now requires to source the cells from Europe as a first choice, <laughs> but uh, I, I found it very difficult to find actually commercially available cells that produced in Europe with the specification that we need to work in the project. So any information that you can mention, okay, this company can provide the good quality cells in Europe. Would be very appreciated. Thank you. You want to answer? <coughs> it, I know it's hard to answer. <laughs> you can answer. Yeah, actually, I don't have like. A, honestly, Eagle is not the, the partner in charge of selecting the cells, but all in all, I don't think there is a very good answer to that because the situation is changing really a lot uh, day to day. So. Sorry, no, no, no insight on that. I'm sorry. I think it's a tricky to give an answer <laughs> here. So. <laughs> yeah, I understand this. I think most of the companies have the same problems at the moment. Okay. I think there was a question, you see? So in the third row. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Chala from Cyro Energy, Turkey. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, not so that difficult. <laughs> no worries. So for the Liberty project uh, that you said, uh, you, you are doing real-time uh, battery data storage uh, for battery passport. So did you consider the data frequencies and data storage capacities for scale-up to monitor all the fleets? 
This is my first question. Maybe I can ask a second, then I will give the microphone. My second question to all of these projects. Uh, so you said that you, you developed some AI-driven fault detection or BMS SOX algorithms. So is it, are these models or methodologies are available on your website or any publications? Thank you. So um, towards the liberty-related uh, question, uh, yes, we have considered, and we are actually working on that right now. Um, and it's one of the hot topics, uh, which is the rate that we actually need. Um, that's going to depend a lot on the service you want to provide on the cloud, on the type of algorithms you are running, whether it is on the cloud or on the BMS or even in a third device. Um, and it's not an easy question, and it's going to be dependent on the system itself that you are using. So. There may be some rule of thumbs, but uh, it's going to depend quite a lot on the system itself, the specific one. Um, other than that, I uh, cannot actually disclose anything else right now, but if you want, just uh, you can contact me and, and we could get into more details. Um, thank you. Uh, regarding Marvel and the application of artificial intelligence to predict degradation of cells, and also for future second life applications, this is done by a research group in University of Athens that is called ICCS, and they, I think they already published something. Uh, and anyway, if you keep in touch with us, or I, I can I can do more research on that and, and give you the links. <coughs> So for Helios, um, I mean, we're, we're looking at different, um, <clears throat> well, evaluating uh, different uh, faults and failures and things like that. Um, <clears throat> we, we, don't, we don't put that much uh, emphasis on, on the cells, um, b simply because um, there's not a technology that we develop. Uh, and of course, you know, characterizing somebody else's product, I mean, it's interesting, but uh, I think we, wish we should focus on our own stuff. Uh, so basically, we, we look into, you know, understanding failure modes and all these things regarding technologies that we are developing. Um, and, uh, and for that, you know, because some of the technologies are new, uh, we have to crash them. Um, and so we are testing to failure. Um, but in doing that for a prototype, probably we're not going to have enough data to actually apply any of these AIs and, you know, things like that. Uh, so the, the bottom line is that we do do a careful FME analysis for all the technologies that we're developing, including modeling, which is an interesting question in itself, uh, but not necessarily applying AI techniques right now. For the Albatross project, the tests are still ongoing and the test progress has not completed yet, but it will be completed at the end of this year and probably they will make some publication to make it make to clarify the progress development for the especially for the artificial intelligence part or the censoring and the early detection part and probably they will make some publication at the end of this year. Okay, thank you. I think there was a question. Okay, yes, perfect. Emma <laughs> uh, from the from uh, Green Innovation. Uh, from this session, I was, ex uh, I was expecting uh, more about battery packaging integration. Um, and all the packaging I saw, maybe I missed some, <laughs> are uh, sell to pack or sell to, uh, to module. But the next generation, and uh, for which mo mo most of the OEMs are working is sell to chassis or sell to body, which is much more optimized. So my, my question is for uh, the project leader and for the commission. Is there any project working on that? Because the competition is working on it. Uh, yeah. From there. So, um, as far as I know, um, I don't uh, recall a project 
working on uh, PAC2 SASE. Um, the most of them are indeed PAC2 uh, to sell, PAC2 to module, sell to module, yeah. I think, yeah, yes, I think. So, so maybe I can say a few words from Helios' standpoint. Uh, this doesn't really apply because we, so it's a hybrid pack, so we use two different type of cells, right? And we want to be able to actually change them, right? So we're doing cell to module, module to maybe semi-pack. We haven't found a good name for that. And then, and then to pack. So that, you know, if we have a string of modules that are only high power, we want to be able to replace that with high energy potentially, right? And achieve the different um, uh, functionality of the whole pack. Um, so, I mean, I think those are interesting concepts, at least for Helios, they may not necessarily be applicable. From the Albatross side, especially for the, at the beginning of the project, we were considering uh, plenty of options for the uh, module and cell developments, but I think it's directly related to the, to your demonstrator car, and because there are some boundary conditions for the demonstrator car, and it sometimes it cannot be applicable for the new approaches on the uh, your current demonstrator car. For us, especially BMW i3, it's uh, 2019. Uh, for it's not we couldn't have a chance to demonstrate the new approaches for the current status of the BMW i3. So um, maybe a little liberty perspective. I mean, I totally agree that it uh, could potentially be the next generation, mm -hmm. that's, that's for sure. But we also have to take into account that in this type of projects, we're facing many different innovations, many different aspects, and if we are very, very ambitious in one of them, uh, I mean, has to live with the other ones and we cannot tackle everything together. So it still would be really nice, but uh, we, we have to make live all those innovations together. I would, what I would say, I also um, get uh, involved with, on, on terms of new materials, multi-materials, et cetera, and, and getting structural parts that make the, 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 the both uh, functions of housing and a structural part of the car, etc. This is one approach. But in this in this call, where we are looking for modularity, versatility among different platforms, etc. Mm, the approach I, I, I think is different. The advantage is it's di it's different. It's uh, on on building designing something versatile that can be used in several applications, more than one specific platform. So I think the question was answered. If I think I think they stated from the projects, and maybe if you want to have a discussion, you can do it during the coffee break, if it's okay for you, or is it just a follow-up question? Okay, so please discuss in the coffee break. Okay. I think, sorry, in the second row, I think you wait <laughs> for a long time. Johan Blondel, DGRTD. Uh, we've heard a few different uh, approaches, um, and I understand that for the selection of your demonstrators, you were restricted by commercial availability of cells, but could you comment on uh, the impact of the, the cell geometry or the cell type, so prismatic versus cylindrical, different cell diameters, how this impacts um, the cooling uh, concepts, for instance, and the structural uh, integrity of, uh, of the concepts that you have uh, developed. Thank you. So maybe you want to start in the direction you presented? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I think the so uh, well, re regarding the effect that uh, we have in there, I mean, we have a baseline vehicle that we have to adapt the battery pack to. So we are facing quite a lot of restrictions in that sense because we have already a defined space for design and already, I don't know if it's the case for, for all the projects, but we have uh, a frame for the battery pack. So in that sense, we have to adapt um, the development we do to that space rather than would be 
the normal process to adapt it to the whole vehicle and to get the most advantage of the whole space we have in there. So um, that that's first thing could be more optimized, and the cell geometry um, could be optimized. But uh, it's it's not only that. I mean, uh, you have the thermal management system, um, you have the electrical system, you have a lot of systems together. Um, that makes not a, a straightforward task to to select the geometry itself, and you have to take into account the whole system from from my point of view. It's not just about selecting the geometry for the specific energy. That's could be an option and could be a, um, a starting point, but after that you have to take into account the whole, the whole system together. Well, I will come, uh, well, as coordinator, as you know, we, are, we don't know uh, all the details, but, and this one I don't know very much, but I would say that depending on the, the geometry, if you intend to have a battery pack more modular, easy disassembly, etc., certain geometries could help on on more design for disassembly and things like this. Uh, example of very difficult to disassemble is there would be a honey panel of, of cylindrical cells, for instance. And, and uh, easy for disassembly would be our okay. <laughs> our designer. But yeah, that would be what I can say. I think it can be directly related to the space that you have first because, and secondly, what's, you, what's your target? You know, if, if you want to get rid of extra part for the cooling operation, you have to select your cell according to the, for example, immersion cooling implementation. And you, and you directly select the cylindrical cells to implement the immersion cooling for the cooling. Well, to get rid of extra cold plate or cooling pipes, whatever it needs. And that's that what was we had faced a really difficult situation during the cell selection term because uh, cylindrical cells, yeah, we get we got higher energy density. It's quite okay, and we can catch the uh, catch our target. It's okay with uh, the weight and the number of cells increased, and <laughs> it's one of the most remarkable part, part for that. And I think uh, the most important thing, what you get from the, what is your results, what's your expectation? And the SAS selection is directly related to your expectations, I think. Yes, yeah, so for, uh, for Helios, um, <clears throat> I mentioned earlier that uh, for, the, for the back architecture, we evaluated some 50, some KPIs. Uh, cell geometry was one of them. We had some 53 others, right? Uh, so I mean, that's, that's certainly, uh, certainly important. Uh, <clears throat> after we selected the, the cell geometry and the, and the type of cell, uh, we were actually quite fortunate to work pretty close with the cell suppliers uh, in terms of understanding uh, how to use the cells, um, swelling, foam, um, the, all these things. Uh, so, uh, so, a, so a close relationship with the cell supplier actually helped. Uh, but of course, the rest of the systems are customized and we're using both pouch and, uh, um, and the prismatic. Uh, and so everything else afterwards is customized for, for the type of cell. So. Okay, thank you. I've seen the microphone, so I'm going to Okay, uh, Lars Flügel from AVL. Um, I, my, my question is maybe related to that, but maybe more to the future. So, um, because the current experience is, um, you showed very, very well what, what is possible here. But if we look into f uh, more into the future, more years, whatever, five, ten years, maybe also t taking into consideration that solid state batteries could uh, arise. So. What, what would be your expectation? I think it was also a valuable comment uh, what is about cell to chassis. So, I mean, these are long, uh, long term consideration. Um, from your experience that you have now, are there any predictions that you could give there? Or, I mean, just considerations? So maybe maybe I can 
throw some, some thoughts here, right? So I, I, I personally don't think it's gonna be a silver bullet. Uh, so we're gonna have probably several technologies on the market, maybe not a lot, but, but more than one. Uh, and also depending what is optimized for different use cases, you know, those kind of things. Um, you know, I mentioned um, uh, hybridization, hybridization quite a bit here. Um, essentially where we saw, uh, you know, benefit in using high power, high energy cells is, uh, let's say for drive cycles, uh, which are similar to a bus, uh, that requires a lot of start and stop uh, cycles. Uh, and so the more aggressive uh, drive cycle, uh, well, part of the drive cycle can be taken by high power cells and then the more cruising uh, drive cycle can be taken by high energy. <clears throat> so probably, you know, it's gonna depend on the type of customer in some sense, uh, whether it's gonna be hybrid or one cell or solid state, right? Uh, I think we also have to account for the fact that by the time the solid state is gonna reach a maturity level, then what we have now is gonna be even more mature. Uh, so potentially, you know, there could be customers which have, you know, are a bit risk, risk averse uh, and just stick with the technology that they know. Um, so I think it's gonna be, you know, uh, we're gonna have options, which, which is a good thing, right? <laughs> so. Does somebody else want to say something about the future? Hello, this is Frédéric Chausson from Stratton Anticipation. I have a question. <laughs> regarding the, uh, when you talk about uh, wireless communication in the battery, um, that would be, if you could say a few words on that, that would be question number one. Question number two also for you, you were talking about the um, pack uh, casing that was uh, not uh, welded. So you use stamping or question? The, the, uh, I think I expressed myself n not correctly in that in terms of the battery housing, we, we, weld, we, we create profiles that are extruded profiles that you can extrude more long, less long, cut, and then a weld, but there is weld, yeah. yeah so there is welding. Yeah, there is welding. What there is no welding is in the, in the connect bus bar connections that are weld weldless and are being investigated by a co Italian company, Agrati, working on that. <coughs> and, and the first, and the other question, sorry. The, the first question yeah, the, was the smart cell the manager. wireless. Yeah, right. Uh, there is one part uh, of the communication between the module sensors to the, to the BMS, BMS label and BMS, that is made wireless inside the, the, um, the battery. So there is a smart cell managers called IS, ISCM, one components that, that uh, lecture data and send it via wireless to the, to the BMS. And I am looking to Carlos because he is in Picosa, he's in the, in the work package that are working on that, <laughs> just in case I say something incorrect. And, and then they, 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 you avoid the wires, the complexity of the wires. And this is made by a, an engineering company in, in the region of, of Barcelona, where more, more in Girona that it's called OTC engineering. They were this, this, this smart cell manager. Yeah. Correct, Carlo? <laughs> oh. Maybe a follow-up question from my side regarding the wireless communication. What's about the security? Cyber security and some, because it's um, a large topic and yeah. leads to discussion. <laughs> well, the, <coughs> the communication is inside the battery. What I know is that the data I think, Carlos, do you want to, I think it, we, are, we are communicating to the cloud and then there are some gateway and security there. Um, but well, we have to, thank you. We have to separate it between two levels. I'm involved with the Marvel, so that's why I can answer. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. not some that's kind it. of strange guru. <laughs> um, uh, well, in, internally in the BMS, the objective is to substitute the communication connections between the cell manager and the BMS. This is for two reasons. First of all, to avoid errors while plugging the cables, and the second of them, a part of, of cost, and the second is to ease automation of the assembly of the modules. Because, because once you get rid of these connections that somebody has to go and, and do it, it's easier to automate. And, and regarding security? Yeah. And about cyber security, it depends on the, layer, on the layers you add. 
in the end, the communications are close, uh, close field com communications. So it depends on the <laughs> on the load you pay in the, in the communication. Nothing. Okay. All right. Thank you. Ben. Thank you. And I, and I had a question, by the way. <laughs> 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 so, well, I will present myself once again, Carlos Oelek Pecosa, for the people who is in LinkedIn watching this. Uh, uh, I have the impression, and I say that I've been involved in this project that. Uh, somehow the, the automotive industry is going faster than these European projects. I see that some technologies that are shown here are already in the market. What are your thoughts that could be improved in these, in these calls? Because uh, in my opinion, this is already late and we are in a very big competition with, uh, with the worldwide market. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> One of the solutions for that could be to restrict more the objectives and focus more on, on, on specific topics. Because if we have to tackle more advances in the same project, the resources are just not enough. And that could be a solution to, to focus. I don't know, Marta, you may know more about that than me. <laughs> but from a project perspective, um, that could be an option. So, so for Helios, um, <clears throat> you know, we have, we have a few industrial partners and they are developing the technology at the pace that they are developing the technology. And so I think, I think you know, in terms of um, uh, go-to-market strategy, they, they have a plan there. So I think it's, uh, it's, it's timely. Um, with, with respect to the hybridization concept in general, um, as far as I know, there is only one company in the U.S. is called One. Uh, that's looking at the uh, dual chemistry batteries. Um, okay, uh, so so they're not too many. Uh, so you know one in China, I know one in US, and we all know one in Europe. <laughs> I also think Marvel wanted to say something before. Um, no, it, it's a, it's a uh, uh, difficult question because it's true that the timings of all these all these uh, programs, no, it's the timing it is, okay, and we need to evaluate proposals, etc. Uh, but sometimes I think it's um, how to take the most from from the opportunity on 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 being working with with public fundings for for innovate and and, and address challenges of the industry. So it's true. Maybe for me it's. Uh, well, it's one on, on architecture or designing of programs or maybe time, etc. that could be, but also once uh, we get the, the, the projects, we need to work very close with industry and try to maybe readdress challenges while, while developing our project and, and getting into the state of the moment. So, and this, and this, for this reason, it's important to work together with uh, research, with industry. <coughs> that, uh, Maybe I can add some comments in this regard again. Uh, my, my answers can, are totally the same, but I, we, at the beginning of the project, uh, it was at the beginning of 2020, and we, the proposal term was a one and a half year ago, and uh, according to the current development, you selected the best option for the implementation for the proposals, you know, and then <laughs> it's been two years later, and your uh, implementation or you non know, technical issues cannot be applicable for the infrastructure of this car you know and uh, that can be tricky <laughs> at at this stage maybe you can change your demonstrator car but it's a, it can be a bit late to uh, re change the demonstrator and then uh, refine the proposal and then uh, it, that's why the most important thing, yes, you're totally right. At the beginning, we thought these things, but we are also facing same problems because the infrastructure of the car is not applicable for the for our improvement, and we have to make some minor revisions on the car as well. Okay, so one question in front. <laughs> Hello, this is Frédéric Chausson again from Strat Anticipation. 
I'm not going to ask a question. I'm just going to say that uh, since yesterday and today, I saw um, very positive things. So yes, you might be late, but the projects were starting three years ago or two years ago. And let's not forget two years ago, where were we? The battery pack has changed so much within such a short amount of time that yes, of course, I mean, maybe some projects are late, but I think what's important for Europe is that all the work you do is so useful for us to have people with the knowledge you are accumulating because we are late. And to catch up, what you're doing is great. So thank you, Europe. <laughs> Thanks for these nice words. <laughs> I think there was a question in the, yeah. Thanks. I try not to, not to ask uh, any uh, technical question, but to encourage uh, the panel that you set up uh, this afternoon, compliment. Uh, two people were referring to artificial intelligence, and you reminded me when I was younger, there was a professor of mine at MIT Media Lab. He set up, uh, a very nice experiment to measure the intelligence of a collective intelligence of a group of people. He started with 100% of men, and then he eliminated one man and added one woman, and then another man and then another woman. When increasing the number of women, the collective intelligence of the group was increasing and increasing and increasing. In the picture that we saw before, there was a woman at the end, hidden by a group of men. I would suspect that the collective intelligence test was not so high, but my just impression. So I would encourage, for sure, to increase this share of participation of women, to have different point of views. We really need different point, point of views. So I'm just encouraging this, this aspect. For the rest, I would say, if you allow me one a short technical consideration, cell to pack now is, cell to chassis is the norm today. Point. Tesla, and why, why nobody's talking about what Tesla is doing in this uh, monoblock pack, having no access to the cell? Can you comment on this? Because BYD is also doing the same. Rivian, Rivian is doing the same. We on bike are doing the same. No way to, to disassemble the pack, no sense, according to me. And I agree 100%. What, what, what is your opinion on this, on this approach? Sell to chassis directly, monoblock, nobody can, can touch it anymore for 20 years. What is your opinion? OK, who wants to start? <laughs> so we again at the beginning. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that it's important to think on what happens when things arrive at the end of life, no matter it's 20, 30, 50 years. And, and also these concerns on the supply of materials, the resilience of the union uh, in this term. And, and it's, uh, it's again, I think, yes, mm, I think there is sometimes conflict of, of short, mid and long term visions. And I think we need to at least a bit care on, the, on what happens in 30 years, despite, uh, yeah, now it seems that it's not relevant. But I, I agree, it's a, it's a balance. And I would not say this is the norm and this discarded, I think. We need to, to think a bit on, on both things, on what's competitive, but also on what, uh, on, on the long term vision. Uh, <clears throat> so I, I'm just going to make the same comment as before for, for on Helios, right? That this doesn't, I mean, we're looking at different things, right? Um, and this kind of, you know, modularization, high power, high energy, you know, has various advantages, right? Customization, uh, potentially uh, the cells can be used for second life for different applications, high energy, high power also in, uh, in second life, ancillary services and those kind of things. So it's, I mean, at least for Helios, it's just simply a different, different approach. Any other comments? Okay. Are there any other questions? 
Okay, good. Then maybe one question from my side. Um, since it, is, since, it, since it is, is in the title of most of the project, and we have seen during the presentation of Arbatros that the impact of battery mass on the range and the capacity has the greatest influence. And when we look at Tesla, they're using steel. So my question, is lightweight really a future option? <laughs> Well, everybody, I think, thinks. Um, I mean, I think it's, it's an option, but it's really, really dependent on, mm. on the design, and on not only in the design, in, in the fabrication of, of, of the packs. So I would say it's an option, but it's an option among any others that could uh, make a hole in, in the manufacturing of a car. I mean, we cannot say that because of Tesla's using steel, uh, steel is the only trend or even the best. Probably is the best for them, but uh, might not be the answer for, for everyone. I know. We are also aluminum manufacturer for the, especially for the stuff components for the OEMs. Uh, yeah. Uh, still, still is an option. However, uh, we defense, we are defending the sustainability of aluminium for this case. Uh, yes, we are no. Pr if you are using primary uh, aluminium alloy, that can be really high. But uh, we have also uh, some metal quality improvements for the secondary alloys to use in the automotive applications to achieve higher mechanical uh, enhancement for the mechanical requirements. Like, it's comparison of the steel and aluminum, it's not applicable because steel is much higher, but however, uh, it can be uh, used uh, for, the if you are using secondary alloy, it can be compatible for the uh, steel versus aluminum because uh, in aluminium, for example, extrusion, the investments are lower and the application area is wider uh, for the steel, the tools and the stamping tools especially. The investment rate is totally high and it's really hard and the scrap rates can be, uh, can be discussed internally because uh, aluminium is lower, has lower scrap ratio when it compared to the steel option also. Thanks. Is there any question from the audience? Any further questions? Okay. So I have another question. Um, it's for Liberty. <laughs> Sorry, you're sitting next to me, so I'm <laughs> facing most of the questions for you. Um, so the objective of Liberty is to upgrade battery performance, safety, and lifetime. And, but I think also cost reduction is one very important parameter. So how can costs be reduced when using innovations like new, new materials and especially immersion cooling, which is not really... <laughs> Um, how should I say, um, state of the art at the moment? So, um, I mean, I'm not the biggest expert on, on that uh, area, but uh, um, one of the ways for me would be to reduce the amount of components. Um, that would be one uh, that helps in, in, in weight and in cost. Um, and basically that's probably the, the most influencing one. Um, reducing amount of materials and the cell to pack approach helps in, in that sense also. Thank you. Okay, any further questions? Good. I maybe one further question to Marvel. 
<laughs> no, it's not that hard question. <laughs> Um, maybe I missed it. Um, how do you want to analyze and determine the suitability of the battery pack for second um, application? Second so, use. Uh, the, um, the BMS. Sorry. Yeah, the the flexible advanced BMS that we made. Uh, they um, it will get information on what is the state of health of, of the battery, and then. Uh, be able to propose second life application. So this information would be available to then uh, get uh, direct um, application on, on second use applications. Yeah. More or less. Good, thank you. Any follow up question? No. <laughs> I think there were that much questions. Maybe one question to, not to Liberty, because <laughs> you mentioned it in your presentation, it's about the battery passport. I think this is also one very important thing that will, when we talk about future. So how is this addressed in Marvel, Albatross, and Helios, the battery passport? Exactly. And the connection, yeah, and the connection. Me? To the data, ah. data sharing. <coughs> well, in, in 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 this specific in Marvel, uh, since really we we don't address uh, battery passport for the components. Okay, what we made is to this anticipation on on the on the degradation of uh, of the models. Well, anticipate when when this will end life of models, then be easily disassembled to a other purposes, second life application, but not on the on the battery passport. But I must I take advantage to say that we are in another project for internet called Free for Leap that works on the the, the what happens at the end of the of the battery or with the materials and there we sorry we work with this uh, battery passport but not in Marmar. Okay. So we have to use. Okay thanks. When I'm looking at the uh, battery passport in Helios, uh, we are doing digital twin, LCA, LCC, and all these things, but um, we're not putting everything together for in a, in a passport, so it's probably just one step short of that. For the Albatross, uh, the data coming from the BMS will be collected in the cloud system, but there is no specific pass passport creation in the scope of the Albatross project, but the data will be used in the KBE tools for the life cycle assessment, and, but there is no specific applications for the battery passport in the scope of the Albatross, but the data will be collected in the cloud system and uh, analyzed in each single data arrived to the cloud system from the BMS. <laughs> okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Hello. Does, does any of the groups have made a, a analysis of the cost of these cloud solutions in an industrial, let's say, no, in a mass production um, situation? Any answer on that? Uh, no, no. The answer from from Liberty it's Path at least is here. No, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in in Helios, we we kind of scratched the surface a little bit in this. Uh, I mean, of course, we're kind of in the middle of the project, but we did look at uh, <coughs> um, uh, requirements and needs uh, for um, uh, for managing all the data. Um, uh, depending on uh, yeah sampling frequency upload rates you know all these things uh, at least as an extrapolation from the case that we have uh, but it's it's preliminary so you know these things are going to be updated as we as we move along uh, we haven't looked at costs yet uh, we have of course the cost for one time off right uh, potentially extending from there I mean we haven't finished it but we are considering uh, you know the impact on large scale of course 
<coughs> yeah, for, in, our, in our side, we, in, our, in our project, we didn't also uh, plan this, but I think it's a good idea not only to, to uh, assess the cost of using cloud services that enhance your capacities to uh, make calculations, uh, complex calculations in your VMS, etc., but also cost and, and, and environmental impact, for instance, because you are externalizing some part of the calculations, some part of the materials, the energy needed for that. And maybe it's, uh, you, give, you gave me an idea once we make the assessments of, of reductions, well, of life cycle cost, life cycle assessment, that I will ask the colleagues leading this if we should consider this. Maybe it's, it's worth. Uh, thank you. So, so maybe I can add one, one thing more about the Helios, right? So, <clears throat> so we looked at all the data requirements to update digital twins in real time and, and all that. Uh, I don't remember exactly the numbers, but I do remember one of the comments were, really, that's it? <laughs> so it, it doesn't seem to be a constraint, actually. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? Okay, because I also have prepared a paper full of questions, but since the question amount of the audience was that big, I had to clear. Okay. I have the wet question. Um, from the opening session, I got uh, somewhere in my ears synergies, uh, uh, systema uh, systematic uh, or uh, studies at uh, system level. Uh, affordability and so on. And then yesterday we got a lot of uh, advanced technology on batteries, very interesting solutions. This morning, very interesting solution on light weighting. And my question is how all this will help us to uh, how it's connected all together? Do you have any connection with the batteries uh, project? and with the light weighting project to take uh, the best, best solution found there, applied on packs, and vice versa. You mean the synergies between light weighting material projects? The other projects. Ah, yeah, yeah. For instance, in our case, the methodology of uh, eco-design approach, we are also using one of the projects that was presented in the morning, fatigue for light, for uh, aluminum, Structural parts, and yeah, there is. We, we, we work in syn we like to work in synergy with other projects, for especially what's the role in Eurocat in, in in Marvel that it's more defined on the lightweight materials, uh, for in, in terms of aluminium, for instance, in high high pressure die casting. In this case, Marvel extrusion, but we tr we try to to yes to take advantage from results from one project to other and try to build up. A port, like a portfolio of a strategy no? on, on certain, on certain uh, aspect of the technology <coughs> and, yeah, and work it with different technologies, different, different applications. Yeah. yeah, so I think this is an important question, right? Um, and probably that's why we have this kind of events. Uh, and that's why we have uh, the next round of calls, right? Um, so I think, you know, at least, at least in my mind, there seem to be a number of activities, right? Um, also, it's up, to the, it's up to the industry to come and pick and choose. Um, so, so of course, I mean, you know, we're, we're listing a range of options. Um, you know, uh, the industry could, uh, could select what, what they like. Uh, you know, I, I don't think it's up to these projects, but of course the question is relevant, you know, how do we scale up at the industry level? Um, I, I think, you know, the way, when I, when I look at all, everything that we have on the table, right, I think we have uh, quite a number of options, right? The question is, you know, is anybody gonna pick it up? Um, and that's, you know, there's still an open question, um, you know, um, it's up to the industry basically to uh, to uh, to come and, and select what they need, right? Uh, our industrial partners are actually, you know, using some of the results internally, right? Uh, and developing their R&D efforts and, you know, things like that. Uh, but of course, you know, this is not something that's, that's, that's public, right? So you're not seeing this, you, you know, 
of course, we're, seeing, we're thinking that you know, probably nothing happens. Um, but you know, so, so I think it's an important question that you know, we're just going to have to ask ourselves as, I don't know, researchers, uh, uh, political bodies, you know, all these things, you know, how do we ramp it up? And also, we are, uh, we are also collaborating in the Levis project, and we are, going, we are currently manufacturing the battery tray system for, for fully extruded aluminum solutions, like what Edward, Edward mentioned before. And we are uh, following the lightweight solutions and implementation of the both uh, composite material and uh, hybrid usage aspects for the, and the feasibility for the uh, in industrial scale, scale it, is it applicable or not? We are at the same time following the current progresses as well. So maybe regarding the, um, the links we have with other projects, not, not always an easy task. Um, well, actually one of the big links we have in, in this case is the, the Colabat cluster in which we are, um, I would say it's quite active between projects so that um, makes to, to take a little bit more benefit from other projects since we are facing similar challenges. And also another strong link we have is that the vehicle used in Liberty comes from another European project, which is 1000 kilometer plus. They are developing a high voltage system, the whole drivetrain, and that's the vehicle that is going to be used for validation and so on. So there is some level of interconnection, but uh, it's not always easy. So we have to remember that we have industrial partners and it's, it's not that simple, but there is some kind. Okay, thank you. Is there one last question? If not, I will hand over to Ma. Okay, so let's wrap up the session. Um, just before leaving, to remind you that the next session is uh, at Troop Einstein at uh, 4.30, and it's about stakeholders' experiences of successful interactions, to connect with the last question, <laughs> and integration of R&I activities. Uh, and uh, also, in the meantime, you can visit the RTR exhibition and the EC stand and meet the coordinators of new Horizon Europe projects. So thank you very much for attending this session. And uh, I think it was very a very successful session for all of us, and we, we learned a lot of things. <laughs>